Norwich and Rivington team service. I hope that you've had a good week and that you've benefited from the extra hour sleep you got from putting the clocks back. If you did forget to do that, one positive of the pa this pandemic is that it really doesn't matter now. You can join us here anytime. And I'd like to open with a prayer. We bring ourselves to a moment of quiet, to a place of peace, to this place of safety and welcome. We bring ourselves to cast off the cares of the world and for a time to reflect on you, Lord God, that our batteries may be recharged, our direction be refocused and our energy renewed, that we may let go of things that hamper us and be free to care gently for those we share time with. O oh God, we pray, renew us, that we may renew others. Amen. Now, I don't know about you, but I am a bit of a people pleaser. I like to feel that I've done things to please other people and I feel satisfied when they let me know that I've done something good. But sometimes when I think about it, that isn't always what God would want me to do. Sometimes I'm guilty of pleasing people rather than pleasing God. And I've found a poem, Are You a Men Pleaser or a God Pleaser? by Margaret Cagle that I'd like to share with you. Along the path of our Christian life, we are not exempt from trials and strife. Let's keep the faith and never compromise just to look good in other men's eyes. Pleasing God should be a Christian's goal. Sometimes we have to take an unpopular role. We may have to make sacrifices to take a stand, do what's right and leave it in God's hand. Who saved you, Christ or your fellow men? O oh, Christian, who washed away your sin, then seek to please Christ in every way. You'll see him face to face one day. We read about martyrs in history's pages who died for Christ's sake through the ages. We may not have to die like them, but we need to live for Christ and please him. Fortunately, in our country, we don't have to make the ultimate sacrifice of dying for Christ as he died for us. And so pleasing God really is a very small thing to do. And now I'd like to share with you today's reading. It's taken from the first book of Thessalonians, chapter 2, verses 1 to 8. You know yourselves, brothers and sisters, that our coming to you was not in vain. But though we had already suffered and been shamefully mistreated at Philippi, as you know, we had courage in our God to declare to you the gospel of God in spite of great opposition. For our appeal does not spring from deceit or impure motives or trickery, but just as we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the message of the gospel, even so we speak not to please mortals, but to please God who tests our hearts. As you know, and as God is our witness, we never came with words of flattery or with a pretext for greed, nor did we seek praise from mortals, whether from you or from others. Though we might have made demands as apostles of Christ, but we were gentle among you, like a nurse tenderly caring for her own children. So deeply do we care for you, that we are determined to share with you not only the gospel of God, but also our own selves, because you have become very dear to us. Amen. And now I'll pass you over to Jill. Paul has written to the Thess Thessalonians about gentleness and kindness. It doesn't cost us anything to be kind to each other, but it really can make a great difference to someone's life. How often do you get a scam phone call, email or something, see something on social media where people are trying to get your details so they can persuade you to buy something that you don't want or don't need? Or it may be trying to get access to your bank account so they can empty it fraud and theft are nothing new. They have always been with us. Going back to the days of Paul's letters to the Thessalonians, there were plenty of wandering salesmen, traveling teachers, people who tried to make a living by offering fresh insight or wisdom, offering some kind of magic, offering a new philosophy or whatever. When Paul and his companions moved into the city with their strange story, Many people must have thought, what sort of people are they? And what are they trying to sell me? The knowing ones in the crowd will be waiting for the money bags to come with a request for contributions. The cynical people in the crowd would be expecting darker events 
or the physically attracted to be offered private instruction. At the very least, it would be expected that the newly arrived teachers would want to make a good name for themselves. The Thessalonians would refute all trickery and would support Paul if anyone tried to charge him with trickery or anything else. Paul reminds them that when he arrived in Thessalonica there was no trickery. There was no impure motives behind his visit. He was there to spread the gospel and speak to those who were open to the good news. Paul had been through suffering. If someone does something and gets paid well for it and then does the same thing again for payment, the expectation is that they are doing it for money. But if they do, it, do something and find themselves beaten up and thrown into jail, then it can be assumed that they have a reason so compelling that they just have to carry on doing it. Paul arrived in Thessalonica with the scars from the treatment in Philippi, but started speaking to the people. He wasn't afraid, or if he was, he didn't show it. The Thessalonians initially showed some opposition, but Paul wasn't afraid this time. He found himself speaking with freedom and excitement, as he says in verse 2, but with the help of our God we dared to tell you his gospel in the face of strong opposition. The message is having an impact on the people, and they realise that Paul is not preaching about Jesus for the wrong reasons. Paul is showing caring, kindness and love to the Thessalonians. He wanted God's love to embrace them, and as he worked with them he found his own love was drawn out to them. In his kindness, Paul was showing his strength. Many people in society, both then and now, see kindness and gentleness as signs of weakness and not strength. They see strength as being hard, unforgiving without any thought for others and any sign of kindness as weakness. Strength is often seen as having power and using it to achieve one's own will regardless. Paul writes in this letter that he and his companions had been like a caring mother looking after her children. They loved them, not so not only shared the gospel with them, but themselves as well. We, are, we very often need inner strength to help us stand up for those who are suffering and need help in their lives. But that isn't about power, it's about justice. St Francis de Sales wrote that nothing is so strong as gentleness and nothing so gentle as real strength. Kindness and gentleness go together. It can take great strength to be kind to others. Paul had strength. His life-changing experience on the road to Damascus, his struggle to become accepted as a leader of the Christian community, and of course his becoming a travelling evangelist. It would have been easy for Paul to give up after his beating and imprisonment in Philippi. He didn't give up. He knew God was calling him. Although, as he writes in Philippians, death may have been the better option, as he would be with Christ. He knew God had plans for him to fulfil and was calling him to spread the gospel to many different Gentile communities and telling them of Jesus. We are living in very difficult times. Many are frightened and lonely. Many are anxious about jobs and finances. Many are suffering with their mental health. It makes people angry and then they lash out. Then there are the conspiracy theories and fake news. People can feel as though no one cares. It's time for the rest of us to show our strength in our gentleness and kindness towards others. There have been so much kindness in our communities. People helping their neighbours, raising money, phoning friends and family on their own, etc. Dave Bagley from Urban Outreach recently said in a Harvest video that every bag of food left on a doorstep is a bag of kindness. Kindness that means so much to the recipient. Just a smile as we pass someone in the street or supermarket I know it's difficult with the mask. A thank you to the staff in the supermarket who have suffered much verbal abuse over recent months. I have a friend who works in a supermarket and she has had so much abuse, it's, it's unbelievable. And then of course we've got children who are hungry. 
and who haven't got enough to eat? Is it too much to ask that they have a lunch over the holidays? It need not cost anything to be kind and gentle, but as someone said to me this week, by helping people and being kind rewards him. Helping someone else makes him feel useful. Many don't know how to help at the moment. Many feel useless. Give food to your local food bank. Phone that friend you haven't spoken to for a while. It makes such a difference. Kindness is contagious. If we are kind to someone, then they are more likely to, that they will pass the kindness on to somebody they know. Let us look for that inner strength that is within us to bring out the gentle and kind side of us. It won't make the virus go away and it won't stop us shouting at the TV when we watch the news, but by being kind and gentle to others, it will make us feel better. Amen. Let us pray. From the security of this place with friends and family and our faith community, be with us, eternal God, as we step into the world of mixed up all sorts. May we be kind and caring to all people, no matter how they treat us. May we be true to ourselves and hold our heads high, sharing your love and your care with all those who encounter, we encounter. Amen. We turn to prayer now. We give thanks, Lord God, for the gentle, caring people in the world, whose love of you radiates from their lives. For their gentleness of voice and touch, for their gentle smile, their listening ear, their quiet assurance and understanding, their patience and perseverance with us. We thank you, Lord God, that you have touched the lives of these people and have enabled them to touch our lives and bring us to our faith and enrich our knowledge of you. Amen. If you'd like to join in and say, Lord have mercy. Lord, we pray for all those who are dispirited and dejected. Lord have mercy. On all who have lost hope or joy. Lord have mercy. On all who are unable to cope, especially as we go through these difficult times. Lord, have mercy. On all who are weak and heavy burdened. Lord, have mercy. On all who are fearful and anxious for the present or the future. Lord, have mercy. On all those who, have lo who are lost or have strayed and have no purpose. Lord, have mercy. On all who feel lifeless and dead, Lord, have mercy. On all who feel forsaken and betrayed, Lord, have mercy. On all who are powerless and helpless, Lord, have mercy. Lord, we think of those people who, who are in the front line caring for for people who are in our hospitals or in the community and need medical attention or, or help with their mental health. We pray, Lord, that you would strengthen those who are going about caring for others. And thank you for them. Let us say together now the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The strength of God guide us. The power of God preserve us. The wisdom of God instruct us, 
the Spirit of God be within us, this day and evermore. Amen. The Lord bless you and watch you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look kindly on you and give you peace. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Amen. Thank you for joining us for our Sunday online service and we hope to see you again soon. Bye. Thank you.